Ray, we need some answers here. Stick your cock in the white ladies, huh? Don't you fucking lie to me! Ray! Fucking stop! You like that? That's good, right? Seems like the kids are holding up pretty good. Tough. Like your dad. I'd rather they be happy than tough. Someday. Not here. This is Mexico. Men like him own justice here. Uh, I, I don't know. He's, he's Norwegian. I, 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 I never asked him. Catolica? Long dick style. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? What's up, everybody? It's DJ Raymo, Power 1051. This is the Powers Industry, home of new music and entertainment. This is my co-host right here, Ahmed. And our guest today is the multi-talented actor, writer, Bobby Rodriguez. I can see it on Espanol. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Bobby? I'm very good, man. Good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So yeah. is Spanish your, uh, you speak good Spanish? Uh, well, my Spanish is like New Yorker. Uh, so. Me too. So that's why I asked. Spanglish, Spanglish, so Spanglish, Spanglish, when, Spanglish, I, Spanglish. when I see the last names, I was one of yeah, I think yeah, it's so yeah, good yeah. Spanish. Because yeah, I yeah. try, but I grew up here. Yeah, yeah, that's the same thing. Where you yo. from in New York? Uh, I grew up actually in Jersey, man. Yeah, Where well, you're a Jersey yeah, yeah. kid? I was born in Puerto Rico, and we I moved to, to New York when I was young, and then... My brothers were getting in trouble. So from so Jersey, I right, interview over. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I'll go right now. I try to find out what part of Jersey. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm up from the shore, the Jersey Shore, sure, man. Sure. Exit 120, okay. yeah. The closer to the city, but it, it was just one of those things where my mother had enough. I'm old, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old, so when we came back from Puerto Rico, New York was not the best, and my mother was like, nah, I'm not really... Feeling that vibe, and I had a tia out in Jersey, and she was like, "Yo, come over here. It's a little bit safer." And and so we went out. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's fly. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> so, what got you into acting? What made you get into acting? Uh, actually, it was it was an accident. Um, By accident? Kind of. So my I have I, I have a big family, like most Latinos. Right. You know, <clears throat> we, we, I have we didn't a, have TVs back then. <laughs> no, no. I mean, well, I guess yeah, you're right. right. <laughs> Um, I had, a, you know, a lot of cousins that I grew up with, but I grew up with them with, like, brothers and sisters, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, uh, one of them, um, who was close to my age, we used to make movies, like, uh, we would take a camera and we would pretend to do kung fu movies, where he would hold the camera and he mm -hmm. would do the voice and I would go like, ah, rah, rah, you know, and he would gotcha. be like, yeah, I'll come get you, you know, whatever. Um, his sister, um, who's my, my cousin, she... Uh, very talented singer, dancer, the whole thing, and she got into commercials when she was a teenager. Fast forward, uh, you know, 15 years, she was in the corporate world, and she decided that um, she had enough of that. Okay. And she had called me up and was like, "Hey, and I, I need to meet up with you. Um, can we grab a drink? I want to talk to you." And she's like, "I'm thinking about changing my life." Okay. She told me she wanted to be an actress. I said, "Yo, I'm, I'm, I support you because that's my sister." And right. and and she's like, "But the was she any good? <laughs> she's amazing, man. She's amazing. She, yeah, yeah. When she, she started, was she any good? Oh yeah, yeah. She. I mean, I mean, she was better than me, you know. So, <laughs> okay. I, I mean, um, so she was. She was like, "I want to. I'm auditioning for this school. It's called the Actor Studio Drama School. Okay. Um, it's a master's program." And it's three years, and she said, in order to audition, you need to have a scene partner. And she didn't know who to ask, so she asked me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I guess I'll, I'll do that. Why not? You right. know? How so old were you at that time? I was 31 at the oh, time. Okay, so yeah, was yeah. Already yeah, I was already, yeah, I was already in my... I was ready to go to law school, bro, to be honest. Oh, I was okay. ready to go to CUNY Law. I had, a, I had applied. I had I'd been accepted. Um, I had my bachelor's from College of Staten Island in history. Okay. I, I had my I had my life kind of planned out, um, mm -hmm. not in a way that I thought would make me happiest. I thought it would bring me the most money because in, in, at that time, I believed that money would make me happy Correct. and instead of having something that I was passionate about. I didn't realize that I had something in me that was deeper than I, I realized. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by the blessing of God, my, my cousin was that angel who brought me to where I felt like I, I, I belonged, you right. know what I mean? Right. And so she, we auditioned. She got accepted on the spot. They, they said, right. you're in. And um, the president of the um, admissions program or the, or the college at the time, she, she came over to me and said, hey, 
uh, what's your deal? Um, are what are you doing? Like, well, they're interested in you. And I was like, I'm going to law school. Like, because to me, I was like, <laughs> okay. acting is not a real I wish thing. I had to tell somebody that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you what know. What are you doing with your life? I'm going to law school. <laughs> I mean, but, but for real, like, you know, I, but I was, you know, I was an older man going into law school. Like, you know, I was, I was, a. Uh, I was a knucklehead as a kid, and I made mistakes like a lot of kids do, and it took me a long time to kind of like mm -hmm. get myself together and figure out what I wanted to do in my life. And uh, I, I, I came to this moment where I had this opportunity, and they, they were there asking me, and they were like, yo, do you want to try out? Do you want to audition on your own? And uh, here's my card and make a decision. And so I call people that I trusted and I asked for advice. and. Um, I eventually auditioned because I was like, what do I got to lose? They could tell me no and then whatever. I got my life that I've already planned yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I did. I auditioned uh, and then they accepted me. And that was 2012. And now it's 2019. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I, and I got to work with some really brilliant people. Um, can, Victor can, Manzar, who's... Can, can, we, can we brag a little bit about some of the projects you're yeah, on ahead, and worked yeah, on? Absolutely. You want to you do them yourself or you want uh, us to do well, I mean, I've been on... Um, I know you've been on SEAL Team. I was on SEAL Team. Narcos. Uh, Narcos. Yeah, uh, how'd you get on Narcos? That was actually my first job. That was actually my first job. I actually... Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. That was, the, that was the job that got me into the union. So it was... Um, you thanks. mean the actors... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the SAG. Okay. SAG. Yeah, SAG. SAG. Okay. So that was 2016. It was. I, I will never forget. It. it was November. It was around Thanksgiving because I went to go visit my my wife's father, okay. my father-in-law, and we were there. And I got the audition. And they were like, "You got to have a Colombian accent." And I don't know how to do a Colombian accent. My, but my wife, she's Mexican. She's a brilliant actress as well, and she knows how to do Accents. every accent. Right. So she she coached me, coached me, coached me, and we we did it. And then I got the, the the call that oh you're in you got the you got wow. the job I was like wow you know it was on my birthday which wow. is December third wow. so that's just, this is 2016 and I get to the set and I'll never forget this day and, and um, I had the, the runs and and <laughs> I was so lucky that I had a bathroom in my in my joint like which just doesn't happen bro like. Usually you're when you're a big time actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get a bathroom, you get a bro. Bathroom when you when you have only one line, you don't get a bathroom, bro. Like you share a bathroom. <laughs> mm -hmm. They had a bathroom in my shit, and I thought this was like gonna be the regular thing. Anyways, <laughs> this is like the eight mile thing. I'm, I'm practicing my lines. I'm doing my whole thing. They come in. They they make me sign all the paperwork, and they give me the script. Mm -hmm. They took my lines away, bro. It was like they took the lines yeah, away. They took the lines away. So all you see me do in Narcos. It, and it's the scene where it's when they come to New York. It, right. That that moment where they come to New York, and I think it was the second season. Uh -huh. You see me. I set up this journalist, and he comes to sit down. Says, so I, I, "I heard you got some information from for you." And I'm like, and I get up and walk away. That's that, your that whole was life. But you don't even know, bro. Like, like <laughs> oh, I man. did that one little thing. I had people like I would go to like the store, and they'd be like, "Yo, you look mad familiar." I was like, "Yeah, I was in Narcos. You seen that?" They're like, "Yo, that's you." I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> you had the runs for that." I, I was <laughs> Just nervous, to nod bro. Your head? I was nervous. And right after that, I booked um, I booked my first feature film with Julianne Moore. It was called Wow, uh, Julianne Moore. With Julianne Moore, it was called Bel Canto. It was based on this novel by um, Ann Patchett. Mm -hmm. It was a New York Times bestseller. Yeah. I played, I played a priest. She's nothing to sneeze at, B. Nah, bro. That was one of my... That's a major actress right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... Um, and and the and it was produced by A-Line Pictures, who uh, produced Capote, which um, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman won the Oscar for Best wow. Actor. And so there was, um, there was a lot of buzz around the movie at, at, at the time, and they had had the rights for like 17 years. And it was just like the luck of the draw that I was there at the right time. I, I got the audition. I went in and, and I got it, man. And wow. that, was, that was my, my first job was Narcos, No Lines. And then I went in my first day there I'm doing a scene with Julianne Moore, and my heart is like going, bah, 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 you know what I mean? And that I feel was bad that for was that crazy. Bathroom in that set yeah, too. <laughs> no, I'm yeah no, I was there all day, bro. Uh, so like the bathroom was done. I was empty. <laughs> so you did Orange Is the New Black, and you did Daredevil. I did Orange Is the New Black. I did Daredevil. You know, How little things. Who were those? Things? Like you've done like for the short time that you've done this. Yeah, yeah. Cool, you got the like, cool yeah. spots. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know, maybe some actors out there kind of jealous, like, yo, I've been doing this 20 years, son. <laughs> and I, you got the good place today. <laughs> I, I'll be real with you. Yes, it's it's not a um, common thing 
yes, I've been very lucky and I'm blessed, and that's um, you know. Thank have you, you ever? Me. And I'm not asking for the name. Have you ever had an actor like like kind of feel a certain way because like they know what your background is and your history, like how you got in and how you got to do all these things that they may not have had an opportunity to do. You know uh, what I mean? Uh, you mean like in a negative way, like yeah, a, like a negative they just kind of like yo, you know, you, well, you ain't really, like let's say they ask you also oh, what you been in and you kind of had that conversation and then they they act in a way towards you like you ain't really uh, earn your, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I. I I mean, it took me a while. Like, I graduated in 2015, and yes, I started professionally in 2012. I considered myself a professional once I started grad school. Mm -hmm. That's what they told me, you come in. I prepared myself. Like, I, I was like, I was older than a lot of kids. Most of those kids were 21, 22 years old. And I was already 30, 31, 32 years old. Right. So for me, it was like, I had a different mindset. You were taking it serious. At that yeah, time. I had a different mindset. I was, I was, I was very open, and I was like, I'm here and to hit the ground running and to, to soak in as much information as possible and, and to take these teachings and, and really work on my craft, you know, because what else? I have nothing to lose, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, 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 I could go back to square one and then I, I go back to try to get into law school again, you know what I mean? Um, so that, that's where my mindset is at, but I don't know, when, when I experience people in the industry, I never, most, most people are kind of like happy just to be there. Right. So I never experienced any kind of neg negativity. Uh, I, I experienced ego. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly, there's certainly ego, you know, Star but <laughs> I think, I think there's, I think that's anywhere you go. There's people that, that, that have earned a place and some people want to really uh, wear that on their sleeve. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's okay. So what does a conversation like that sound like? And again, uh, you don't have to give us any names because I'm not trying to corner you, but you know, it, give us an example of a conversation when you were like, oh, I, I think he, I think especially in the acting world, it's, it's very passive aggressive, man. Like if someone feels like they're at a higher level to you, it's not really, they, they won't push that energy onto you. Right. They'll push it on the people around you this, and this trying to like blame this you. This is the yeah, music yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're it, very political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like, uh, yo, why is he talking to me like that? You know, is this the way the scene goes? He you know what I mean? He'll yo, tell you, he'll tell you Is this how this would go right now? And they're asking like the script writer and shit. Like, like why is he touching me like that? I'm like, because it's written and it's yeah, supposed to take a smack like just take that smack it's written in a script you know like both it down yeah yeah it's true though it's like so so there is that you know there is gotcha. that there is that um um it's a different I, industry yeah yeah i mean there's this there's this there's a, there's a sense of uh of entitlement ego with not everybody. I mean, I've been very, very fortunate that most of the projects that I've worked on, I, I've worked with um, very giving artists, you know, very giving actors who right. were, were, who saw who I was and, and the fact that I was very new and green and, and they taught me everything they knew, wow. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, which is how it should be. It, it, which is industry, how it should be. Should yeah, yeah. Be and like they were that, very right? honest and... Uh, I, and, I, and I felt like 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 Ken w w Watanabe. Uh, I don't know if you know Ken Watanabe, Last Samurai. Mm -hmm. Yo, one of the most giving, amazing artists. I did my first scene with Julianne that I was telling you was my uh, my my heart was pumping, and it was a scene where a man is is dying, and I'm giving him his I'm praying <clears throat> I'm playing a priest. I'm giving him his last rites, mm -hmm. okay. and um, and the person is close to Julianne Moore's character, and so we're having this intense scene. And I do it, and um, it's my first time to really try work my craft and, and what I've been working on. And when I was done, I was exhausted, and I look over, and Ken Watanabe is like this. Open He's arms. Like, like, a, like, like, I was, like, he was my, like, my dad. <coughs> That's hot. I swear to God. Like, he came, and he was like, and I hugged him, and he held me, and I was like, yo, this shit is crazy. And that was my first day. Wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> Welcome I was to like, acting. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, this shit is bugged out. And, uh, but everybody on that set was amazing. Um, and I was lucky. That doesn't, that's not always the case, right, man. Right. So I, I was lucky like that. But when they see us, um, was also like that. Everybody was on their dean. Well, everybody. Before you go into when they see us. Okay. Daredevil and... How, how do you get on Daredevil? Just audition, man. I mean, it was it was like a very small part. I was playing a like a SWAT team member. Okay. Um, 
But it, these like major series like that you're a part of that well, everybody yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. get on. It's like, you know. And it was, and also, like, some people don't know, once you get on a Marvel show, it doesn't matter how small yeah. a role you get, you can never be in anything Marvel after that. So I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. So I could never be in anything Marvel just because I played this one SWAT dude and you just see me and uh, all, my, my only line is, go, how do you know? That's all I say. <laughs> At the end of the episode. He's like, that's not the real Daredevil. So had I'm you known like, that, would you have still accepted the role or would you have held back? Of course, man. I'm, it's money. What are you yeah, talking so. about? It's like... Yeah, I'm getting paid. Like, I, I don't have... The, I'm not at the level where I could say I'm not going to take this or I'm not going to take that unless they're asking me to do something outrageous. You right. know what I mean? But, like, uh, I I won't say no. I, I, it's you what wanna, I do. You just want to work. Yeah, I mean, it's like do. anything, you know? It's like, fulfilling it. It's not just the money, but... I love it. I right. love it. It's I love passion. it. I love it. And, and, and no matter if somebody asks me to do something, I'm, I'm always in the, in, in, in the universe of saying yes. I, you know, people ask me all the time, yo, can you do this reading? If I'm free, I'm doing that reading. I'm, I don't care if I'm not getting paid. Man. Well, the reason I asked you that, um, and I get it, that you definitely want to say, yo, there's a blessing I'm going to do. But because that's a very unique thing. Now you can never be in a Marvel thing. So some people might try to be a little more strategic and say, well, I'm not going to do that because what if there's a part that opens up for Marvel that's major for me? But you didn't know at the time either when you said yes, so it's not something you could have truly considered. Of course, no. You know but they I mean? tell you that it's in the it's oh, in the okay. NDA. They 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 explain it all, and, and it's like, I mean, it it's turning out. So now money. you gotta go to DC. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, DC. I was in you know, one. What's up? In my mind, it's like eventually my goal is to get to a certain level where they could say whatever. It don't matter. And yeah. it don't matter. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And then they'll, they'll offer me that part. Gotcha. But at this point in my career, it's like I say yes because it's my passion and, and, and there's so many people fighting just to get that spot. And, mm. and I'd be, um, it'd be disrespectful for me to be like, no, I'm not taking that because I'm eventually going to be the Marvel superhero. Like, then, come on. Then you yo, would be very... definitely Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would be yeah. in the Hollywood No, category. I want to make money, man. Yeah. I got bills to pay yeah. like everybody else, man. And the law degree didn't come through. So nah, and the law degree did not come through, <laughs> man. Did not come through. <laughs> so you want to talk about it then? Do you want to get into the, to the, to the Netflix special? Yeah. All right. But I wanted people to understand who you were, that you were not just that. Like you've been in more stuff. Uh, yeah. So I played, let's talk about let's let's talk about the Central Park Five when they see yeah. us. I played uh, Detective Humberto Royo, who um, was one of the lead detectives on the case. He was um, a Latino man, mm -hmm. um, which made the character very interesting um, and complicated. Uh, complicated how? Well, because for me, mm -hmm. as a Latino man, in my experiences growing up and dealing with police and um, getting harassed, getting pulled over, watching my friends getting beat up, um, it was an interesting uh, take to get onto the other side and try to figure out, all right, as human beings, when we make a decision, Right? Every decision that we make is always the right decision. It's never the wrong decision. Every time that we do anything, when we say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go to the park, I'm gonna eat this sandwich, anything you do, that's right. Right? Mm -hmm. It's always right. You justify anything you do in your mind. Right? So here we have a man, a Latino man, who is interviewing children and he is, um, using training that he had mm -hmm. and he does not see a child in front of him he just sees a blob right like not a uh, non-human non mm -hmm. and uh and it doesn't matter to him he's got his his boss yelling in his ear telling him this is what we got to do yeah, this is what has to happen <clears throat> and make it happen and he's like, all I'm, and what he's thinking about is like, let me get through this. I'm going to Atlantic City this weekend. I got my girlfriend on my back. I got my <laughs> wife yelling at me. You know, you, we don't know what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to get into, <laughs> into the psyche of a person who would do that and justify it and make it right. Because in, in my mind, in my eyes, in my worldview, I, can, I can't see it. I can't understand it. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I, um, when I auditioned for the for the part, I didn't actually audition for Humberto Arroyo. I auditioned for a very small part. It was like a one liner, right. and um, and I did a great job on that. And they called me back, and they wanted me to, pl to, to do Arroyo. And so I auditioned for Arroyo. Then they called me back, and that was my audition with with Ava. Wow. And I and I went in, and, and the scene was where I. Um, I choke up uh, uh, Raymond, Santana oh, Raymond. You're the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. So I was mad when I was watching that part. <laughs> they didn't like you much. No, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, not supposed when to be you did a... that, do people recognize you in the street? Have no, you gone... no, I was very worried about that. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting jumped you know, on the train. Yeah, because it's, like, it's oh, like really, there are people out think... there who are nuts with TV. Like, yeah, they're really nuts. Yeah. But that particular film just sparked, like, there's so many people out here mad at white people. Ridic of course, you know what I mean? Course. Like it's all their fault, and it's not. It's not every white person of that course, did that. Of so course. corrupt people. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so well, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a justice system that's um, favored in a in, in a direction that that doesn't help people of color. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you don't have money, you you you're, you're not gonna you don't got the get out of jail free card, right? right. You know, so you can't afford the good lawyer, and 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 the justice system is very much a a business, right? I don't know if you ever watched Better Call Saul. Like Better Call mm -hmm. Saul is like a really very accurate way of how the justice system works, where it's like you have like a uh, public defender. He goes in, he sees his boy. It's my boy George. Hey George, man, look. So I got this kid right here. What what do you think? He's like two years. What, what, what do you mean two years? Two years. You're not gonna help me out with the two years? Two years. All right, cool, cool. We're gonna go grab a drink later? All right, bet. It is, there's, there's no human being that they're no. dealing with. This is like trading cards, right. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's in and there's, out. There's, no, there's no like, um, there's no stakes for them. They don't feel any yeah. hurt Everybody's a number. for the fact that, <clears throat> that, that um, you're playing with people's lives. And this is, this, is what, this is what happened in, in, in this case. Like, you, you had, these, there were children, first of all. Let, mm -hmm. we, we, let's get that out of the way. That's, they're kids, man. Right. They were, they were kids. Right, right. This should have never fucking happened. Right. And um, there was political pressure. We had the, the current um, douchebag in office who put out this fucking paper and, yeah. and basically placed a, a target on these kids. He put a hit on a child. Of course. Yeah, you're talking about the, when Trump the put it The orange guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So... So they had everything against them as far as public opinion at the time. It was a very racially charged thing. They weren't even there, bro. And then, like, the guy who spent most of the time in prison was he even in the park. Well, in the he park. was just looking out for his, his boy because he was afraid his moms Curry. was going to yell at him. Like, so, right. like, this whole thing is, is just is bizarre. It's wild. It's not the first time it's happened. Right. People, people like you, people like you, we understand this. We, we know what it's like right. when we see a police officer and we get anxiety. And, like, I, I don't you know what I mean? Like, 100%. It doesn't matter. To this day, I'm a 40-year-old man, and I still, when I see a cop, I get nervous and I change the way I'm behaving because I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to get caught up in, right. in something confusing. So yes. So when I uh, back I, to I would say we, you can't win against that gang. That mm -hmm. gang, whatever they say, you just gotta be sad to say, but complacent and just try to get, get and through now, the and it's through not, this and moment. It's, and it's not like it is not like it's not. I don't want to want to say like it's their fault, but it's like. They were trained, so there was a specific technique at the time that they were using. It was called the Reed technique, okay. which is a which is a um, a a technique that they use to interview suspects that basically fatigues them to the point of admitting that they were what that mm -hmm. they did something they didn't do. Right, and um, it's 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 almost like torture. Right, and now you do that to like a 12, 13, 14 year old kid, they're gonna break. It's forty eight right. yeah. hours they had these kids in there. You know right. what I mean? They're gonna say what. Ever you want, right. and that that's why they outlawed that technique. But that's how they were trained. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then, like, I have to take that into account. Like, I got to take like, okay, so the they cops were trained. The how much of how much of it was training? How much of it was personal? How much of it was kind of like the 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 upbringing? You know right. what I mean? The bad and I had to look at I had to look at it this like in, in in the eyes of a Latino man, and so I had to throw I, for me personally. I threw all of that away because. 
there was no way that I could I could figure that out in such a short amount of time. I'm auditioning. Mm, right. I don't know much about this dude's history. The little bit of articles that Did I read. Did you meet the, uh, the They original? would not. They would not let us. They would not meet, meet us. us. They the, would not meet us. I they met didn't them. want to meet you. The detective didn't want to meet you. The detectives, did not, they would not meet oh, us. Okay. Yeah, Ava tried to get them to meet okay. us. Um, but I, I did meet the five. Because they knew what they did was wrong. Mm. That's well, of what, course. They knew yeah, what they yeah. did was wrong. Of so, course. you know, you would think, I got it. Yeah, yeah. So what's crazy for me, I was, I was a lot, when I was in Spofford, I was with those kids. I was younger, but I was in Spofford with those kids. So, and that, that was the talk. Was I was there, and there was another kid, and his name is George. He was, that was, I don't know if you heard of it, it was in the paper, it was in, the, I think, of the Times or whatever, and there was a kid that was in there with us, he burned another kid for not smoking crack with him, and he was in there at the same time. So it was like, I'm a little kid in there doing, you know, things I shouldn't have been doing in the street, and I'm in there, because I'm young, and I'm, like, terrified, I'm like, damn, I'm in here with, like, yo, the Central Park, because in my mind, they did it. Like, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking they did this, and I'm believing that, like, I'm, I'm a young kid, and then I'm in here... Next to this dude that's that burnt this other kid for not smoking crack. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, it was a crazy time. And Spofford, the way it worked was that was in the Bronx. So it didn't matter if you lived in Queens, Brooklyn, whatever. They had the Queens table. They had the, and Brooklyn always had the big table. They had, used to have like three tables. <laughs> Seriously. So they have Queens. And these were, when you get ready to go to court, they put you in this big lunchroom. And they sit you there and you handcuffed. And I'm handcuffed to this one kid, man. He's off the hook. He's wilding out. I'm like, nigga, I don't want to go to fucking court and get out of here, yo. Chill the fuck out. Me and him get into a situation. And they almost kept us back. And then the other guy was like, no, no, no. He was picking on him. He started. So then they separated us, and I was like, yo. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And yeah. I lived, and I used to stay, I'm from Polo Grounds, but I used to stay in Johnson Projects. So I would go to Central Park because at Central Park, the lights would go off, and then the lights would come back on because once it closed, and everybody would climb back over and jump in the pool and walk. So I'm, I'm very familiar with a lot of that stuff, man. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and, and man, just to, just to bring it back to, to, the, what you were talking about and, and, and the fact that they rounded up a lot of kids that night, you know what I mean? That had nothing to do with it. Right. And, um, and they picked them out, you know what I mean? Um, uh, and and, and the, the, um, the way that, that the justice system worked and how people, it's so impersonal and it's not human beings. That guy, Detective Sheehan, actually was the guy who bagged Matias Reyes the East Side Rapist who oh, murdered so the woman the, he got the who was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And he didn't connect the two cases together. He didn't. Mm -hmm. He had the ability to do that, but he was a drunk. He was a big time drunk. And we hired a consultant on set who was a former detective who worked with him. He was like, the dude was a drunk. You know what right. I mean? He was like clocking in Clock during out. like, why was clocking in? He's at the bar getting hammered. You know what I mean? So like, these this this these are the kind of things that that fell through the cracks because you had people who didn't deserve to wear that badge you know what i mean who weren't doing their job who had the ability to solve a crime and they were just being lazy or for whatever reason did not decide to do the right thing you know what i mean and yeah. um and that's sad and 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 that's not the, you know we we talk about the central park five they weren't the only ones. Right. This has happened yeah. probably I don't thousands know. of times. The Central Park Five was every day. Yes. In the streets of yes. New York City. And that's what people don't recognize. Like, we're highlighting this. It's just like when they talk about Rosa Parks, and there's no disrespect to Rosa Parks for taking a stand. But she wasn't the first black woman to take a stand that I'm not sitting. It's just she caught the light of it. You know what yeah. I mean? But there's tons of kids that live in the city that go through this. And I'm pretty sure in Jersey it's like that too. Everywhere, I mean, man. Like, it's crazy. Children of color go through a lot, you know what I mean? And even as adults, you know what I mean? It, it's interesting because I, as I've gotten older, I was like, oh, yo, shit is changing, it's, it's finally moving, and then this guy forward. gets elected. And, I, and then I hark back to one of my earliest memories. I remember being in Jersey and, and um, I go to a store with my cousin and my aunt, which my aunt was, was uh, visiting from South America and uh, and she was like, I want to go to the store. I want to, you know, I don't know what she wanted. I don't right. remember, but I went with her, you know. And it's me and my cousin and like little we were kids, like we're like bro, like 11 years old tops okay. maybe. 
and like kids, you know, we're looking at things and we're in the looking aisles the and shit. And, stuff. and every time I would look down the aisle, I would see the, this woman like sitting at the end. At the, the end of the aisle, like me, me mugging us, Watching, children, still right? Like me mugging us, right? Follow us through every aisle, and then finally she approached us and said, "You gotta leave the store." I said, "But why? My my aunt is is shopping." Right. She's like, "Well, you can meet wait for her outside." Oh wow! And as a child, I didn't understand like what this woman's problem was right. and why she would do that, and 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 make me feel like. Like you did something wrong. Like I did something wrong. Yeah, you didn't I wasn't doing anything. I was just a hang. I was just a kid, man, and I didn't understand racism. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? And I was like, <sighs> it's a real thing. It still exists. That was fucked up, man. You don't do that to kids, no, bro. Not kids. Yeah. You not, shouldn't do that to anybody, but children definitely not. Yeah, man. Because you still remember it, and that's what's crazy. That's one of the things that's, like, that's it seared. Stays, it's seared into yeah. my mind. I remember when I told my father. When, when, when I told my father, when I told my father, my father was like, T- you know, tell me where she's at, blah blah blah. Um, I'm, I'm gonna talk to her, and I, and I was like, I, I don't know, I don't know why, but as a kid, I was like, no, no, it's fine, it's like yeah, whatever. It's Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I misinterpreted it, you know, but. Because as a kid, you're always taught like you're wrong, you know, like you don't know what you're talking about, you know what I mean? Right. And then as you get older, you like you, you you think about shit like that, and you're like, yo, that sh- that shit was fucking foul. And then getting harassed by 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 police as a teenager, I remember my first time getting harassed. I was in, I was at the train station in Rawway, and I wasn't doing anything, bro. I was just a kid. Like, and I, I remember I was like, I, I loved Onyx, yo. Like, Onyx is like my <laughs> shit, bro. So take I, sha- up, take I up. shaved my head. I pierced my own ears because my parents wouldn't let me pierce my ears. <laughs> I fucking took the needles and put that shit through my ears. And I had like, uh, I had like the hoops in my ears and shit. And I was like, yeah, I'm Onyx. I had the vest on. I went to go visit my cousin. And I'm, I'm sitting on the fucking, the, the train station in Broadway. And uh, these two uh, DTs, they, c- they come up to me and they're like, well, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? Like, you got condoms on you? And I'm like, who the fuck asked you if you got condoms? Like, well, who cares if I have condoms? You got drugs and condoms on you? Like, are we not allowed to have condoms? Like, <laughs> That's the wildest shit I've ever heard. I'm 13 years old, man. I'm 13. I'm like, well, we're learning about that in school right now, so I'll get back to you. <laughs> I don't know anything about, like, you know, like, I know, like, you know. Yeah, that's crazy. But those little towns in Jersey are always like that. They, they really police their grounds and they're... They're, they're fucked up with it. But, Bro, you know, it's, it's, it's much different. And, and the sad I part is imagine. those are the areas where the properties are high because <laughs> like, they're so evil with it, but they, they, they protect their areas with that. If you're too lenient, then it's the opposite. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm from Newark, right? In Newark, you cannot chase a stolen car anymore. So now the crime theft is crazy. They'll pull up to the cop car, beep the horn, like, come on, let's go. And, and the my cops can't chase Steve, them. My cousin's from Stephen Crane Project. Oh, yeah. They so used to hang out over there. You can't chase them. So it, yeah, it, it yeah. creates more yeah, wow. and more and more. So it's, it's kind of like, they, it's too much of it. There's, there's got to be a balance. And that's the hard part. Like, who, who's, who, who polices the police, right? Who, who could kind of like, I don't you know, know what like, yeah, That's just, crazy. But I uh, won't be, be driving to Jersey now that I know that. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm going back to Take Jersey. Take the train, yo. Take the train. Yeah. Take like, the yo, train. Like, yo, man, could you get me from the train station? Yeah. <laughs> they could tag you yeah, or whatever. I'm pointing those both getting wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> I, again, back to my point, I was like, as I thought I got, I thought, like, I experienced all this in my life and I thought we had moved on and that mm-hmm. we have elevated and evolved as a society and that we had gone to a certain point, you know, Obama's president, and I remember the day he got elected, I was like, man, the world's changing, like, this is good, it's crazy, you know, the, we felt good, we were in a happy place. This man got elected, and it brought back a lot of the, it opened a lot of these, the these scars wounds. that we thought were healed, yeah. they, they just the ripped wounds. them open. Yeah. And, 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 and people are starting to act out because they, they feel empowered by it, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, well, well, now I can say what I want to say. Or I can, I'm allowed to to feel how I want to feel, and, and and there's nothing wrong with that. And 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 that's, I don't know, man. It's a, it's a bad. You time. take two steps forward, and you take four steps back. I don't know what the saying is, man, but that's how, that's how it felt for me, man. Like I felt like we moved, we we had gotten to a place in society. And then we move back, and then I'm so proud to be part of something like when they see us, right. where we could actually Change bring that shit culture, to light yeah. and, and actually 
get people bring the light get, to it. yeah like get people like to be like fuck you know there's nothing has changed man and and this woman who did this is still making money and finally she got fired yeah. and the after, other one got after fired after the Netflix came out then it, then she started getting yeah. repercussions of it but yeah and to me that's true art man that's like true art, art that's art power is, art is is supposed to affect the world and and change your point of view and that did its job right right you know that, what i mean that's and I one of the pieces that. that were definitely life changing yeah, cultural changing real. Made, changes people's mindset and it was an amazing piece. Like that's history. That's gonna be forever. Yeah. People are gonna be talking about this film, this yeah, documentary. Yeah, I'm gonna be like the guy with the mustache who's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But you're in it. You're part of history. I like did. major history. And 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 I'm proud of the work that I did because I made people feel what right. I, you know what I mean. Right, like right. They, I made you got, hate you me. got the anger. Yeah. I made people hate me, yeah, and that was you that made was, people hate your character, and that's what they were supposed to do. A yeah. Good actor so honestly, does that. They, yeah. It's believable. That's what you did. So we want to thank you for stopping through and hanging out with us, man. You, and, me, you know, man. sharing your experience from the film and what you become. And we look for great projects to come. Is there anything on the works that we should be looking for you in? Um, right now, I'm um, I'm writing my own project. I'm writing a project called uh, Iphigenia, which is about a um, a young girl who lost her family and she joins a caravan in Guatemala. Okay. And um, okay. she con- tries to get to the United States. She's only like a 12 year old girl. Wow. And she tries to. So I'm writing that right now. I got um, a good friend of mine who's, who's a great writer is writing it with me. Um, mm-hmm. I have a um, production company that I started with my wife. It's called Vols Productions. We did a... Um, That's right. Your wife is in actually. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, <laughs> she's a... Yeah, plug. She's in, in, <laughs> she's in the new season of, of uh, Orange is the New Black. She's going to be in the new season of uh, Jack Ryan. She's been on Blue Bloods. Beautiful. Um, yeah, she's a very talented woman. That must woman. be fun. A household actors. Yeah, yeah the it same, is. It the is, same yeah. way you guys give each other advice. She's like, so since you're writing this thing, she's like, I'm in that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no choice. She's like, yo. Yeah. No, that's cool. He's in the books already. <laughs> she said, I don't see my name here. <laughs> yeah. You're not using her. You're using me. Okay? <laughs> It's true. No kissing scenes, all right? Don't write no kissing scenes. I had the sex scenes and arguments, like... You know what? That's a very touchy thing, man. That's a very, very touchy thing. Because you're legally married, right? We're, we're, we're legally and through the eyes of God. I had two fucking weddings, man. I had the civil ceremony, and then, um, you know, her mother and my mother were like, y'all not married, though. <laughs> yeah, I just got a piece of y'all paper. Didn't, like, you, you didn't get married in church, so it doesn't count. So then we, so had, to do it again? The, we had to do the church thing. Yeah, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so we had, two, we had two wedding anniversaries. I had to be like, yo, choose one, yo. Choose one. <laughs> yeah, consolidate it. this. Because I can't. It's too much, man. <laughs> too much Even to remember. Google calendars, you know what I mean? can't remember my birthday. You yeah, want me to remember two it's, anniversaries? It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. So. I, I, at the same time, I want everybody to be able to find you. Like, what's your social media? How can they reach uh, you? On Instagram is Bobby Daniel Rodriguez. Okay. Um, on uh, IMDb, same thing. IMDb.me slash Bobby Daniel mm-hmm. Rodriguez. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's that's where you can find me. You can find all my projects uh, on Instagram. I, I I try to update it. I'm not good at it, man. I'm an older head. No, so you, you're just working. People who are busy and really working. Yeah. Don't really Instagram. Yeah. Like Instagram is for those who have nothing better to do. And they can, you can be successful. Judge, I don't want to judge you them. You can be successful. I don't want to judge them. But, but, you know, yes. I mean, yeah, like. Uh, you're busy really living life. People are faking Also, it. uh, it's just like, I don't want to tell people where I'm at right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't need to, like, hey, I see you in the movie. I need some money. <laughs> you need you to slept on that. my couch. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yo, they remember all that. Yo. What you doing over here at the beach, man? You you don't call me? Uh, no, that was three weeks ago, bro. Yeah, I was just posting it now, you know what I mean? It works, it works. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, you, so man. when you come in by the house, <laughs> I need that $20. That's my, that's my mother and my father every fucking week, man. Gotcha. Every Do people week. think you're like super rich now because they see you on TV? I don't know. I don't think that. I think, I think, but I do. I do think like a lot of times people believe that I have more power than I do. Money. Like, yo, I want to, yo. I've been thinking about being an actor. Like I was gonna ask you that a couple seconds ago. I was wait, waiting for the right moment to ask you. <laughs> Yo, you want to be in the movie? You want to be my next joint? Yeah, right, right now, man. I, I, I please, I want to uh, do it. All right, I'll well, do anything. Well, well, hey, listen, if I have the with power, that. bro, if I have the power, that's like. But yeah, I'm like, listen, DJ, you gotta no, have. I don't have to be a DJ. I want to be an actor. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen, I'll man. I'll be a, I'll DJ. Then. 
that shit. <laughs> Whatever you ask me to do, let's see. see, he being picky. I'm you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yes. He says yes. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. But yo, all thank right. you for coming out, hanging out with us, man. Absolutely, you know man. what I mean? Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Bobby Rodriguez, in español. Sí. Con Jersey. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs>